In this video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at number 38 from the chapter 1 review. And this is a problem where we want to try to use the intermediate value theorem to verify that this function has a zero on the interval from 1 to 2. So basically, we want to prove that this function is going to cross the x-axis somewhere in between x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now before we go and look at this specific problem, let's just kind of remember what we had said about the mean value theorem, excuse me, the intermediate value theorem in class. So the intermediate value theorem, the way that it appeared in the book is right here, and, and this is right from out of our notes. Uh, if we have a function that's continuous from the x value of a up to the x value of b, and w is some number that's in between f of a and f of b, that means there's going to be some x value c belonging to this interval for which f of c equals w. So graphically what it said was if you have a point here a comma f of a and a point here b comma f of b if you know that your function's continuous it doesn't have any holes or gaps or jumps in it asymptotes as you go from this point to this point there's absolutely no way that you can get from this point to this point this y value to this y value unless you cross every y value intermediate to these two y values at least once in between. So if we go back and look at problem number 38 a little more closely, so what we're going to try to do here is apply the intermediate value theorem to this function on the interval that's specified in order to prove that we have a zero within the interval. Now before we can use the intermediate value theorem we have to make sure that it's able to be used. So that theorem that we looked at, the, the main piece of the hypothesis was that the function has to be continuous. So what I'm going to explicitly state here is I'm going to say that f of x is continuous not only on just the interval from 1 to 2 but for all real numbers f of x is continuous since it's a polynomial. All polynomials are continuous. We said that. So since f of x, this cubic function, is a polynomial, we know that it's going to be continuous. Sorry about my uh, poor handwriting there. But f of x is continuous since it's a polynomial. Since we know our function's continuous, we know we're going to be able to apply the intermediate value theorem to this function on this interval. So what we want to do next is we want to go ahead and figure out what f of 1 is. So if we're computing f of 1, we're just putting 1 into the function. So we're going to cube 1, we're going to subtract 1, and then we're going to subtract one more, right? We're just putting 1 in place of the x's. 1 cubed is 1, minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 1 gives you a function value of negative 1. If you go ahead and also compute f of 2, what we end up with there is going to be 2 cubed minus 2 minus 1, when 2 goes in place of all the x's. 2 cubed is 8, minus 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So basically what we've determined so far allows us to, to sketch this. We know on this graph that when x is 1, our y value is negative 1. This point is going to have to be on the graph, 1 comma negative 1. Now when x is 2, we know our y value has to be 5. So our y value is going to be up here a little further at a point somewhere in there. Since this function is continuous from this point to this point, we know that it's continuous because it's a polynomial and we explicitly stated that it was continuous. There's absolutely no way that you can get from this point to this point with a continuous graph unless you cross 0 at least once, the y value of 0, or the x-axis at least once in between this x value and this x value. So what all this work that we've done implies to conclude here is that f of x will equal 0 since 0 is a y value that's intermediate to these two y values or these two function values for at least one x on the interval 1 to 2. 
I'm using an open interval here because we know that the zero of the function is not going to be at one. We know the function value there is not zero, and we know the function value at two is not going to be zero either. We computed those already. So I know the conclusion of the theorem had this listed as a closed interval, but since we already know what the x values are at the endpoints of this interval, we can go ahead and we can leave that as an open interval. So just to kind of wrap things up here, when you're asked to use a theorem, what you're going to want to get in the habit of doing is explicitly stating that the hypothesis of the theorem is true and then why it's true. So the main part of the hypothesis of the mean value of the in intermediate value theorem is that the function's continuous and we know that our particular function in problem 38 here from the chapter review is continuous since it's a polynomial. Once you know that you're able to use the theorem, go ahead and try to develop the appropriate conclusion. So hopefully that helped.